Hi everyone, I'm Laurie Goldstein of Sun Media, and I'm here today with uh, Sun Media's esteemed uh, columnist from out west, uh, Lauren Gunter. And Lauren, there's so much going on in the world today, we can barely keep up. But one of the things that's about to happen is that uh, Justin Trudeau is about to raise his carbon tax by 25% on April 1st from 8.8 .8 cents per liter to 11 cents per liter. Given all that's going on in the world right now with energy security and, and, and energy prices skyrocketing because of a number of reasons, tragically the war in Ukraine, but, but also uh, we're still trying to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. What do you think about hiking the carbon tax right now by 25%? Yeah, it's, the, it's absolutely the wrong time to do it. And, and it's counterproductive. I mean, the reason that the uh, carbon tax was brought in was to make going, uh, using gasoline more expensive, using home heating fuel more expensive, so you wouldn't use as much of it. Well, the, the, the rise in oil prices, the rise in prices at the pump, inflation have already made it difficult for people to afford to fuel their cars, to drive the kids to soccer or hockey, uh, to heat their home as warm as they'd like it in the winter. All of those things are already being achieved by market forces. So the only reason the government would then bring in a, an added tax uh, on top of that would be because it likes the money. It wants the income. And it has nothing now to, it's separated the reason for bringing in a carbon tax from the effect of the carbon tax. And it's now just another tax. There's no moral, there's, you know, there's no moral angle to it at all. I, I agree. I also think people don't understand the number of taxes there are on on gasoline already. There are provincial taxes, which have nothing to do with the carbon tax. There's the uh, HST, which has nothing to do with the carbon tax. There's the federal excise tax, which has nothing to do with the carbon tax. And perhaps most outrageously, there's the GST on top of the carbon tax, which is a tax on a tax, which, as I understand it, the vast majority of economists totally disagree with. You don't put it right, back. Right. And yesterday, to give you an example of what that means, uh, BC also has its own carbon tax. And on top of that, in the lower mainland uh, around the Vancouver area, it has a 17 cent a liter tax to pay for transit. So you're being punished if you drive in order to subsidize people who take the bus. And with you add all those taxes in, if you drove across the line into Washington state, which is a very, very short distance from some of the suburbs of Vancouver, you were looking at gasoline that was the equivalent of about $1.20 a liter. In Vancouver, it was $1.94. <laughs> so that's the tax difference there, 74 cents on the liter. So more than half of the, the, the actual cost of fuel is then added on as tax. Yeah, just which should make, I think, clear to our listeners that the, um, in terms of the federal carbon tax, it's going to go up from 8.8 .8 cents per liter by 2.2 cents or 25% to 11 cents per liter on uh, April 1st. When that tax is fully in place, if uh, Justin Trudeau or the Liberals, I guess, are still in power, it will be in today's dollars in 2030, 34.7 cents. That's for, that's for the carbon tax alone. So we are talking about big dollars in addition to all the other taxes on gasoline, which Lauren, and, you're absolutely right. Those are carbon taxes, all those. Other of course. Taxes. And but also, like every other revenue stream, governments get addicted to the cash. It doesn't matter what the purpose of that tax initially was, you know, to fund schools, to cut down carbon emissions, to do whatever. Eventually, governments just get addicted to the money. And, uh, and that's, that's really dangerous because then it ceases to become a policy, a policy directive, and it becomes more of just a cash cow. I think also uh, the, the liberals sold this very deviously as that, well, we're going to have rebates and we're going to give all the yeah. money back to yeah. everybody. First of all, that's only in four provinces, which have had the uh, federal carbon tax imposed on them. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, like already the parliamentary budget officer, the independent nonpartisan officer says, well, no, actually yeah, only about 60%, um, uh, like about 40% of the households in Ontario are now paying more. Also, it doesn't cover the indirect cost of carbon taxes. They always talk about natural gas and gasoline, but when you raise the price of fossil fuel energy, everything goes up 
because everything uses fossil fuel energy. Yeah. Also, the federal taxes, the GST and HST are eroding that difference. So, um, and also, how can anybody possibly calculate their number? Because it's not based on how much um, uh, carbon energy a family uses, it's based right. on family size. Um, it's just insane. I did want to ask you one other thing. Um, Stephen Guibault, the uh, federal environment minister, uh, gave a couple of media interviews uh, this week. And he said, oh, well, look, um, Canada can't, can't fill the Russian, Russia supplies 10% of the uh, world's oil and 40% of natural gas to Europe, which is, of course, a huge issue right now. And so he said, well, look, Canada can't fill that gap. We don't have pipeline capacity. So knowing as you do about the history of Stephen Gubo, I'd like you to comment on that. My view, that was like a child killing his parents and asking for mercy from the court because he's, yes, an, orphan. he's an orphan. Exactly. That's precisely what that's like. I mean, this is a man who spent his entire adult life, his, his whole professional career, including in government, trying to stop pipelines. And he has been quite successful at it. He, he has, uh, certainly since he's come into the government, uh, only reinforced Justin Trudeau's anti-oil, anti-energy uh, views to begin with, and fed this fantastical notion that somehow we can stop climate change if we in Canada uh, don't build pipelines. I mean, I remember one time Google saying uh, it, it wasn't the pipeline that bothered him. It what was in the pipeline that bothered him. <laughs> and that actually was very in instructive to me because, you know, I, you, you always thought in the past about pipelines, people were opposed to them because they didn't want the actual pipeline to run across their property or they didn't want it under the ground where it might leak or something. It was, it was the physical pipeline that was the problem. With him, he, 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 it's not. It's, it's the idea that you're going to take fuel to, uh, you're going to take a, a raw material down to a refinery that's going to turn it into fuel that will be in where, where there'll be emissions when it's burned. And that was very instructive to me. But this is a man who has spent his entire life doing that. And now all of a sudden he's saying, well, you know, you, you, sure, it's a nice idea that we should we should uh, help out the world by, by pumping more energy, but we really can't because we don't have the pipeline capacity. I think we also need to be, I think we should be clear to the audience that there is a cost to this in Canada of our lack of pipeline capacity. That means that the vast majority of our oil and natural gas resources, and we are one of the biggest producers and exporters of those desperately needed um, commodities in the world. But and one of the cleanest, that, that's that, another thing, one of the cleanest producers. Yeah. And the vast majority of it has to go to the United States because it's the only market we have. And therefore we sell that oil and gas at a vast, we lose tens of billions of dollars yes. year after year because we have to sell it discounted to the US because we can't get a gas pipeline or oil pipeline to tidewater. That means to the ocean where then you could take it and you can move natural gas because it's called liquid natural gas. And then you can move it around the world. So if we had had a coherent energy policy Literally, right now, we could be helping Ukraine directly. We could be helping its allies to stay firm, and we would be making money. It's a classic example of doing the right thing politically that would be the right thing morally. And we can't do it because of a Trudeau government that thinks of oil and gas as best left in the ground. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And to just end this, this discussion with one tiny little thing, while they're not talking about any of that, not talking about holding off on, on the carbon tax increase, not talking about, you know, becoming a part of the world's energy security solution. Uh, they were debating yesterday in the House of Commons uh, environmental racism. We know that the impacts of climate change are felt more acutely by marginalized or minority groups, and this bill would ensure environmental racism is addressed and prevented. This government wants to eliminate environmental racism because apparently people who live too close to garbage dumps or to environmentally uh, uh, dangerous projects uh, tend to be uh, black, indigenous, and people of color. And therefore, it's the systemic racism of, envi of environmental regulation, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they, they, can, they can get themselves diverted into something like that and not deal with the economic impacts, the impacts on ordinary Canadian families of increasing their carbon tax, or the fact that we cannot even become energy self-sufficient 
and rely on Russian and Venezuelan and other conflict oil uh, because we won't build the capacity we can easily build in this country. There's so many problems with that um, argument. And I, I think it speaks, Lauren, to just the cynicism that we see, the frustration and anger we see uh, through things like the Freedom Convoy. Absolutely. Uh, but, but just that, okay, if you want, where, where do all of humanity at every level, where do they do best? They do best in industrialized countries that have the financial resources to assist everyone. So my argument would be, if you are worried about environmental racism and the quality of life of people, then you should be mourning that we have forfeited billions of dollars in government, not only in economic activity, but taxes to the federal government that could be used for the very things we care about. I agree that, that minority groups often um, don't get a fair shake um, on everything from, from where the hospital care is to, to where, where jobs are. Um, Absolutely, but we could take all we could take that revenue and and fund those programs infinitely without going into further deficit if we weren't if we just weren't giving up billions of dollars every year because on the major issue of our time, which is energy security, the Trudeau government has gone precisely in the wrong direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, I'm Laurie Goldstein of Sun Media. We're always interested in hearing your views and please follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and our YouTube channel.